MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news, reviews, events, and special offers via video media. Mark, this is quite an interesting machine we've got here. This is the Murata MW40. Yes. Um, just give me a little bit of an idea about what the machine is. Um, well, this is the smallest entry-level uh, Murata they do in terms of the, the parallel spindle design. Um, the idea of having two spindles side by side is that you end up with a much smaller footprint than you would do if you had an inline spindle machine. Um, <clears throat> this machine manages to accommodate both X, Y and Z, driven tools and all stations, in such a very, very small footprint. The machine is available either with or without the gantry. Um, if you have it without a gantry, then you can see the footprint. It's about 1.8 metres long. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I was trying to, uh, I que was questioning myself as to where, where is the benefit to having that as opposed to the opposing spindle. And I thought mainly it's down to the footprint. Is, is there any limitations though with having it in this parallel plane? There are, yes. I mean, obviously you can't have a tailstock with the machine, so you're limited on the length of the part. But then the limiting factor, it doesn't really come into the equation because normally you'd be loading with a gantry anyway and you wouldn't be loading long parts. So it's designed for small components, small prismatic machine components as well. So how many machines would you sell of these without the gantry? Um, <laughs> Not many. Well, in the UK in this year we've sold probably 50-50 with or without gantry. The benefit of the machine, if I just go on the benefits without the gantry, is that um, if you had, for argument's sake, an OP10 and an OP20, okay, typically you'd have two separate single spindle lathes, which would be probably facing each other, so the operator can work between the two. With this machine, the operator stands in one place with both spindles available to him, and he hasn't got to keep moving parts around. The benefit as well is that you can run two separate components two completely different jobs on either spindle. It doesn't have to be an OP10, OP20. It could be two OP10s, two OP20s, or completely different family of components. So, uh, and, and it's pretty quick. It looks like a fast machine. It is, yeah. Um, because, obviously, you're not moving too far in terms of its X, Y, and Z axis strokes. Um, it's all about acceleration. It's all very, very, it's all very compact, yes. Yeah. But the machines, Murata, are very, very good at making machines that are very thermally stable, accuracies that they uh, that they uh, they promote uh, two microns um, on roundness, repeatability. So it's a very, very stable, strong machine, but it will last a very long time as well. So it fits quite neatly into the Matsura portfolio with if, yes. with the types of things that you're mentioning. Yes, I mean, the two, the two ranges complement each other. Um, Matsura, obviously, we sell um, high-value prismatic machining centers. Um, the Murata is probably on a par in terms of the quality but from a turning perspective. And on the turning side, we've got the turrets with, with driven tools. Yep. What about if we wanted to, and I haven't looked in detail, but if we were looking at off-center machining like Y-axis and yep. things like that? It's the MW40, even with a small compact footprint, you've got plus or minus 25 mil on the Y-axis. So it is really for small parts. Let's look yep. at the loading, because I know here, what, 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 are, what are we doing here? Well, one of the things that Murata do is that they're very, uh, good at integrating um, some form of some level of automatic loading into it. It's very rare that we have just a machine drop it on the floor and it works as a two axis lathe. There's always some level of integration. Um, on the system we have here, we have a bowl hopper um, which is uh, randomly picking parts out that in the correct orientation, delivers them down the part chute for the robot to then pick up. So you've then got an OP10, you've got a turnover station, OP20 and then we're feeding out the other end with a conveyor. So is this a standard product, what we've got here? Uh, in this guise, yes. Murata would probably say there is no standard machine. Everything is slightly different. Um, with this system, it's designed for small, maybe cast components, small forgings. Um, but in high volume? In high volume, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to summarise then, or to, to finalise, is this all Murata, this is, there's no third party component trees, this is a right, Murata. This is, all, this is all Murata. And what Murata are very good at as well is, for argument's sake, we have two spindles. Maybe you have a situation where you need a third spindle. So what Murata would do is you'd have a single spindle, um, same configuration, parallel spindle lathe, but you'd bolt that on the end. So you'd have an OP10, OP20, and OP30. Or, for argument's sake, you could have an OP10 with a 10 minute cycle time, an OP20 with a 5 minute cycle time. So you'd have two. Op 20s to cater for the 
throughput of the first one. So if I was looking at the two solutions, this out or uh, a twin turret, twin spindle machine with a similar size capacity, yep. uh, where's this going to be better suited to? What type of parts? Um, if it's an MW, then it is uh, forgings, it's castings, it's pre-machined components, but volume. And you're looking for a smaller footprint, hence, yes, yes. Compact design, small mm -hmm. footprint, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Very, no very interesting. Thank you. For more videos, products, and news, go to mtdcnc.com or follow MTD Online on Twitter.